Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. So these things are mesh-tastic devices, more specifically the HTIT Tracker 863. That's the frequency, 863 megahertz, and these are the LoRa Wi-Fi Bluetooth thingies. They look a lot like you know any typical dev board when you get them in the box you know obviously i've made a 3d printed enclosure that you can find on my printables page um, it's quite neat it has some buttons it sort of uh, makes them robust they've got onboard batteries and all is good um, however when i uh, go out and about with this i don't really get the range that I expect and that's because I really have no idea about this subject but I expected I would get more um, and if you've ever dismantled an antenna of something like this and I can show you this in real time there you go it's so diddy you know you could actually shorten this significantly <laughs> I think I might just cut that there to make a little diddy one but you can see that's the antenna that these things use um, and hopefully it's tuned to the right frequency um, and if it's not you're never going to get the right performance so how do you figure out if it's tuned or not apparently you go on Amazon and you spend uh, around 150 uh, and you get this which is a vector network analyzer a VNA and it comes with a USP lead and a warranty card which I'm probably not going to bother filling in and a nice little box like this nano vna v2 now they do have various versions of this one i believe um i ordered this specific one because it goes up to a higher frequency than is typical and there's a diagram on the bottom look port one port two input transmission reflection um, there used to be something when uh, I used to play with CB called standing wave ratio and I can't remember really what you were supposed to do with that if to minimize it or maximize it but you you didn't want it I remember that you didn't want a standing wave because it could blow up your transmitter so it's a bad thing if you've got that and uh, Clearly, I'll have to do a lot more uh, research on this to figure out what I'm looking for. Thanks for acquiring this 3G portable vector network analyzer. Go on the website for more info. So I'll zoom in on this just because a lot of people uh, contact me some years later. And by the way, that's the website. Say, can you pass me the website? It doesn't work anymore. And I have no affiliation with these. I don't even know who makes it. Um, and uh, it's, it's, I can't, it's an answer I can't give. So let's turn this on. I'm just going to turn it on cautiously again. I don't know that. Oh, there you go. It boots up. That was quite cute. And that was nice and fast. Um, like I said, I, I ordered this specific one because it um, covers a certain frequency range that uh, is more than the standard. Because if you want to do Wi-Fi, you'll need a better one, apparently. There you go. That's my technical jargon there. So I'm going to unscrew this antenna. And I'm going to pop it on one of these. So let's have a look at here. Port one, transmission line. Port two. So I'm guessing you want it on port one. Which Oh, look, here you go. Look, you've got a TX and an RX. That's interesting, isn't it? You know what? Maybe, maybe I'd better go on the website and have a look. Maybe I have to put an antenna on each one. Okay, so this was a bit of a roller coaster. I ended up having to phone a friend because I did watch a video on the YouTubes and it wasn't massively helpful. However, now I can tell you what all these things are. So I'll turn the lights back on. I just I just turned them off so you could see the screen. But this kit is actually a calibration kit, believe it or not. And you have these various items. And these, though, are the main ones you're going to need. I mean, there are a few extra bits and bobs, but these are the main ones. So what you've got here is that's your load, that's an L, um, a short, that's an S, and you can see I've written on them, <laughs> and then open. But if you turn them around, that's an open, what it looks like in the left. That is a short. You can see that it's got a little pin in it, and that's the load. It's a bit longer than the other two. And then you have this one, which is a through, and it's nothing more than a U shape there, in and out. So what you've got to do, and bear with me, I'm just going to set this up in front of your very eyes. Let's turn that off. 
So you've got to set the uh, range of this, or the sweep, I suppose, because it basically is a spectrum analyzer. And uh, despite what you see on the screen with this weird graphic, this is called a Smith uh, display, apparently. I shall, I shall step you through the process. So go to the Calibrate menu. And the first thing I'm going to do uh, is connect to this port one. I'm going to connect the open. And if I look through, there's well, one of the O. So you connect that on there. In fact, actually, before you do anything, before you even calibrate it, scratch that. I'm leading you astray already. We're going to go back. You want to set your um, stimulus and you want to set your start frequency. And this is your whole range. So if you imagine we're going to do a analysis on this device, which is supposed to start at 863. I'm going to give it, I don't know, 800 and then M for megs. 800 megs to... That's the start. The stop, I'm going to do, uh, I don't know, a thousand. For argument's sake, a gig. There we go. So then you can see at the bottom here, it'll say 800, and then over here, one gig. So we're all good. So we've got our open in there. I can turn the lights back on. We don't really need to see the screen too much. So I'm going to go and oop, go back. Let's select now our uh, calibrate option. In fact, you can see the screen even with the lights on. It's just me who can't. I'm going to do calibrate and I'm going to say open and it's going to run now a calibration. Now that that's connecting, you see there's a tick by it. I'll pop that out. I'm going to put the short and then hit short. And you need at least um, open, short and load. So that's for your sol calibration. But if you do a salt calibration, S-O-L-T, that's a better one apparently. And you'll notice at the bottom as you do it, you'll get these little letters appearing. So we have O and S, and now I'm going to do the load. Okay, so you can see now O-S-L. So this is enough apparently to get going, but just for extra goodness. And again, you can see I'm using all the professional technology because I clearly know what I'm talking about. I'm going to pop that on there, and now we're going to click through. And there you go. And what's nice is when you hit done, it does actually offer you to, to save these. And I'm going to save this on save to. And that's done. So you can see we've got that Smith chart. That's that weird, again, does this help you? Yeah, it's got that weird uh, circular thing going on. Um, but we don't really need that. So what I'm going to do at the minute, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to display, uh, trace. I think we can turn off these ones. I'm going to turn that one off. So now we've just got the yellow one. And I'm going to say format, and I want it to be SWR, standing wave ratio. So that's what we're interested in. You can see it's flat, but that's because we've still got this connected. So I'm going to now disconnect our calibration doodad. And we're going to connect the antenna of interest. You can see now, there, we have this curve on this antenna. And this antenna, if you remember, we're, we're looking for an 863 uh, range, more or less. But then when you see here, that doesn't look like it's an, not you know in our, in our area of interest. So I'm moving this little cursor. You see this little cursor around? And you can see here, you want it at the bottom of that valley, yeah? So I've moved it to the bottom of the valley. Then up here, this says 956. So this antenna is definitely not doing the beans. So when I think my mesh-tastic has got a rubbishy range, it has got a rubbishy range, it's probably because of this bloody antenna. So what you could do, technically, and if you have ever made your own antennas, you'll be familiar with this. You can go online and do a, get a calculator to calculate these lengths and whatnot of your antennas. In fact, look at that. That has actually changed it. Just have it moving that plastic thing. I can't believe that. Let me just see if that is me. That's blowing my mind. So even the cover of an antenna has an effect. That is, that is crazy. I would have never in a million years thought that that would have had a you know, some sort of capacitance or whatever it's giving for the antenna. But you'll see, if I move my fingers near it, yeah, it's actually adjusting this. So technically what you could do is, 
adjust the length of this very slightly. I'm, I'm going to just try for fun, just stretching it out. Now, normally you'd have to chop a bit off. So I've stretched that out, and then I'm going to pop this cover back on. Let's see if we've moved it. Look, we have. We've gone off the chart now, we're off a gig. So what happens if I squeeze it all back together again? And you can see through doing this, you might be able to give a little bit of a tune. In fact, look, it's really, it's messed up now. I've messed it up good and proper. Now, as a sanity check though, we did have that other antenna before I messed with this one too much. Let's undo this one. And this goes to show, you know when you see different qualities of antenna? That's why, it's probably, oh, look at this one. Much better, in fact, let's see. That one's uh, 9334. So it, it's better, but it's kind of like the other one before we uh, messed with it. <laughs> so let's pop this out again. So those other views, you saw that Smith's chart. If you know how to read one of those, you could probably figure something out and that would help you. Um, so I'm, I'm going to mess with this one now. It's like, I don't care too much. Um, I wish I had maybe another spare, but it's okay. Look at that, what have we done? It's off the charts now. Have we messed this up? Let's see what happens if we bite a bit off it. Now, admittedly, I don't know if we should be biting it or making it longer, but I'm gonna take off a few mil. I would reckon that's probably, Ugh. you know, it's a bit difficult to cut. There we go. So that's probably about three mil. Let's see what happens. Oh, interesting. Now, does that look like it's moved it to the right? It might have, you know, let's try a bit more. There's probably radio uh, ham people just shouting at the screen. Now you can adjust these things if you have various gadgets. I've seen them. You know, there's things you can you can use to tune antennas. Yeah, it is going to the right. So we probably did need to make it a bit longer. Now you can see what I've done. I've pulled it all the way there by soldering an extra little bit on the end. Now that does give me the opportunity now to trim it down carefully. So I'm just gonna bite it, uh, you know, <laughs> to be honest, five mil at a time, it's pretty long. And uh, just to let you know, in a previous life, I did used to make my own antennas to receive uh, radio broadcast transmissions and it's this is incredibly fun to be honest with you making antennas is fun and having a tool that tells you if you're doing a good job or not is super cool so i'm just going to pop this down now here so you see the little cursor going down holy smokes guys look we're at 838 we're almost there look at that let's do a little bit more now i have to be a bit cautious because we are you know getting close Doink. Right, where are we? Look at this. Let's move it now. Oh, 868. Come on. Come on. I don't think you're going to want to mess with that anymore at all. That now surely is in the uh, sweet spot. So I'm going to push that thing right on. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, that's okay. That was just me touching things. And then where's it settled on? It's settled down to 866. So I'm pretty happy on that. Now, if you go and look at these other views, um, let's say format, you'll see the Smith, Smith thingies. Now, if you know how to read them, I guess that's good. So I'm gonna show it on the screen in case you wanna comment down below. Is this a good Smith view? Um, again, not really quite sure what you can see, but um, you can see this curve here. That's your signal flopping around and whether or not it's good, I don't know because I don't know these displays. So there you go, whistle stop tour of these antenna things. In fact, I tell you what, 
I think we should go back to comparing those two again. And I, I kind of um, wish, and it may be entirely possible, that you can capture the screen to do a comparison because it would be very cute if you could uh, show these two channels at once. But just for reference sake, let's I'll take my hand away from the end of the antenna. So you've got one here, run 872, it's saying the sweet spot. Now it's kind of drifted a bit, but that's probably just me touching it and messing with it. This is the non-molested one. And you can see they're right over here. And if we move that cursor again, come on, come on, come on, come on. 942, absolutely crap. So there you go. So I don't know if that's been of education to you because I might have just told you all wrong stuff, but this micro VNA with its calibration kit on Amazon for, I think it was 120, 130, something like that, is an absolute must, I think, for anybody who's interested in trying to get any of this uh, mesh-tastic or software-defined radio type projects going. I think that's really cool. And I'm really looking forward to trying this on my uh, other little radio, which I haven't showed you, which is one of those Hack RF jobs. Um, it's really good as a handheld, it's one of the porter pack, and it's really good plugging into a PC if you do SDR. So I'm going to show you that at some point. Um, but yeah, you use these type of antennas for it, and I think this is going to be a great tool to ensuring the antennas you're using are really in the, the band that you're looking for. Like, share, subscribe if you're so inclined. Come talk to me on the Discord, and as ever, thank you so much for watching.